My name is Stephen and this is my channel, Hearts Delight Exports. Okay, so today I'm back down to my shop. Sub pump is going, I'm not sure how good the audio is going to be on this. But I'm starting a new project. This is going to be a Christmas present and as you can tell, I'm probably going to be late with it. So let's turn this into something else for a Christmas present. Okay, so seeing I don't want the netting that came with this, this is not a very good dip net. First thing I need to do is actually remove this part. All the holes are lined with um, some sort of little plastic grommet. And I have a bad feeling all those things are going to have to come out too. Okay, okay. This might be so hard after all. See? This is all the little plastic grommets on the inside. It's going to limit the size of the netting, the size of the twine that I can put through here. But the idea is to put both ends in through a hole, and considering how tightly woven the racket was, I'm probably going to have a hole in the middle. This is my line. There's a hole in between. If I go every hole, it's going to be a very t tightly woven net probably a lot tighter than I need it to be. I need to do two strings, all, uh, almost all of these holes, all about the same length, and get everything hanging in place before I can start on the next step. I have my racket set up on a bit of a jig here. It's just to hold it steady because trying to hold this and tie knots and put line through it and all, that's, that's going to be troublesome. So I want to get all the rest of the line going through. Okay, so I ran into a bit of a complication here on the end. Close to the base of the handle. Seems the holes don't line up quite as much as I would have liked. Let's see. So the holes on most of the ring are nice and large and easy to accommodate the string and for the most part it's been easy going I'm near the end of it now and things have been going fairly easy which is usually when something pops up to cause trouble isn't it just not wanting to go through and it's important it's important in this case that the strings all go through the frame at the same same spacing and the same direction but I'm gonna have to do something because it seems that all the all the holes back here are of a smaller diameter okay so I got all my lines put in and now comes the most tedious part of this whole project I have a little scrap piece of wood as a spacer, as a broken off handle. And what I need to do now is start tying strings together. It's only a little granny knot. So right here, you see the, the knots that I've got tied. It's only the two, but this is one set of strings and this is the other set of strings. The next knot that I tie will be joining the two, these two sets together. But first, I have a lot of other half hitches and such to tie. Now the first round of knots, it doesn't really matter where you start. The idea is fairly simple. You need to start. You need to get something going here, like any project, right? So here I'm about to join these last three strands into the, the net and I'll actually be able to say after this that I have a bit of a dip net. So 
So I'm joining all of my strings together. A left string from one couple, from one set this way. A left string and a right string, and a left string and a right string. So I'm always going left to right, left to right, all the way around the circle, over and over again, until I get everything done and I get down to the bottom. Now it's very important that you keep an eye on your spacing. Unless you want an excuse for why the, the big one got away, of course. And you want to leave a big hole in the side of your net somewhere. That's totally up to you. I got nothing to do with me though. Don't blame me if your fish got away. See that? So, as I go down, all of these knots should be lining up a fair bit better than this one is. I might have to make an adjustment there. It's not so easy to judge this. I guess if you had a lot more experience than I do, which <laughs> shouldn't take much seeing this is only the second one I've ever done, you should be able to keep a better eye on your spacing. So now I got my first line done. I got my second line done. Now it's to pick a spot and start on my third line. It doesn't really matter where I go, and I think if I had a bigger spacer bar, I'd be able to, I'd be able to make use of it again. Yeah, that seems like it'll work. Now, this is where it's going to start getting complicated to keep track of your lines. And this is why you use granny knots in a lot of ways. I just made a mistake there on which line was supposed to go together. This line and this line are not on the same level yet. So each knot should form a diamond, even if they're, even if it's a little crooked at the moment, there's no weight into it. Each one of these should be a diamond. So if you put some weight onto it and you find that it's not looking like a diamond, you've done something wrong and you probably tied uh, a couple of the strings together wrong. So you need to backtrack, find what you did wrong, and fix it, of course. It's very important to try to keep your direction going properly. Now what I mean by that is do all the lines all the way around and then spiral down to the next one, and the next one, and the next one. You don't want to tie a bunch of them off along the way out of order. That's just asking for trouble. It's too easy to cause confusion that way. So as I'm going along, I'm finding it very useful to stretch the lines as much as I can. It's only held on to this upright 2x4 by a couple of clamps. They're pretty good, but I don't want to lay that much strain on them. But it helps keep things taut here, and that tautness helps me see where I need to tie the next line. This is what you need for the finisher. It's a simple washer, it's got a nice inner diameter, 
and it's got a sizable heft to it, right? It's a good piece of steel. Now what I'm going to start doing down here on the bottom doesn't overly matter where I'm going to start tying strings into the into the ring. Now, how tight these go does matter because otherwise you'll leave a hole in the bottom of your net. The order doesn't overly matter. Not that I'm aware of anyway. You can always correct me if I'm wrong in the comments below. This is what how deep a five foot, roughly five foot length of string will give you on a dip net. Is that good enough for a codfish? Probably not. It's probably going to end up being too short for that. Now, I really wish there had been some way to keep the grommets on the ends here because that would have protected the line and made it last longer. I can't really tell if those edges are sharp or not, but So far, that's looking like a pretty good dip net. Once it's all tied up on the bottom, it should have a pretty good ring on the, on the bottom and will keep in any fish that you might be able to, to put into it. Now, you're gonna say, you ruined a great, a great tennis racket, uh, badminton, fact, I don't know what kind of racket this was squash or something like that it doesn't matter to me now yes technically I ruined it but I bought it at a thrift shop for less than uh, around three dollars I think I paid for this so it couldn't have been that good to start with the fishing line cost me about four dollars at uh, at Dollarama store so all in all I'm into this dip net for less than ten dollars and for the most part, I should be able to go back, even with my mistake in making this as short as I have, I should be able to go back and still have enough line. I should have more than enough line to go back and do this at a longer length of twine to be able to get the deeper net that I think I'm looking for. Merry Christmas, have a happy new year. I'll see you next time I'm in the shop. 